Hey guys, I'm going to do a video on the Roman Catholic Church's false doctrines of Mary. Now, um, I want to say I'm doing this not because I hate Catholics. I believe Catholics have a heart to do what's right and they want to know God, but I've got to tell you what the Roman Catholic Church teaches you are traditions of men brought in from Babylonian paganism, from uh, virgin child worship, from Tammuz, Semiramis, and Nimrod, not from Christianity. The, the church in Rome was founded by Paul, not Peter, and the Catholic Church or the Universal Church was taken over by Constantine and created as a universal church, which was basically paganism with Christian names and saints thrown on top of the demons they worshipped, the minor gods. Like there was a, 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 a little god for travelers. So now they have the patron saint of travelers, etc. Uh, and their doctrines and their sun god worship as you can see through their pagan symbolism, like the obelisk and the womb, which is right out front of St. Peter's Basilica. The statue that's supposedly of St. Peter was transferred from a pagan temple and represented the god Jupiter. It's the same exact one that people kiss the feet of. And it's mentioned, the, the, the obelisks, they are mentioned in scripture as an abomination unto Baal. The Ashtaroth poles is what they're called the stones to the, uh, for Egypt and others that worshipped uh, these false pagan gods. And I'm not doing this to hurt you. I'm doing this so you can be free from the bondage of that tradition because you owe it to yourself to check God's word against anything everyone is teaching you, including myself. Don't take my word for it, but I will show you in scripture direct refuting verses that prove these lies they've taught you about Mary. Now they say, we don't worship Mary, we venerate her as if she is a mediator or something to pray for us. And I will tell you that that is an abomination before God and it is unscriptural. So I will read to you what the Catholic Church tells you is true versus what the Bible tells you is true. And either you believe the Bible is God's word or you believe the traditions of men taught to you. Jesus Christ is the head of his church, not the Pope. There is no church, like one giant universal church, ruled over by one human being. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. And there's only one Holy Father, and he is in heaven. We are told not to call any man like Holy Father in a spiritual sense, because we only have one, and he is in heaven. So... Uh, the Mary thing concerns me, so this video will be specifically for that. I will do others on how the pagan traditions were brought in and how there's 300 years between the founding of the real church in Rome, a little tiny Roman church, it was, it was small, that was started by Paul, versus this big Roman Catholic church that has nothing to do with that original church. And Peter didn't found that church. He was he was sent to the circumcision to the Jews, not the Gentiles. Paul was the one to the Gentiles, and Peter was not uh, uh, without error. You claim your popes are without error. That's not true. Uh, Paul rebuked Peter. Uh, so we have to look at these things, and uh, a lot of people base it on where it says, "Upon this rock, I'll build my church." The rock, we're told in several places, is Jesus Christ. So Peter is the little stone. He is, uh, the rock was the revelation given to Peter. Because he said, who do men say that I am? He said, this prophet, that prophet. And he said, thou art the son of God, the Christ, son of the living God. Blessed are there, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood is not revealed as to you, but my Father in heaven. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. Okay? So the revelation uh, I mean, Jesus is the foundation of his own church, bottom line. Peter's not the foundation of the church of Jesus Christ. So, uh, in any case, there's a lot. I could prove to you the differences from the original Roman church 300 years later to the pagan rites, even transubstantiation, which comes from worship of pagan deities like Osiris in Egypt, and the Mithra cult, which believed in transubstantiation, 
which they just brought in from paganism as opposed to the real Lord's Supper, which is just symbolic of his body and blood. It doesn't literally turn into it. So um, I will do videos proving all of it, even showing you the garb, the hats they wore, the same hats and symbolism from ancient Babylon. Uh, Rome is called Babylon in scripture. It was known to be called Babylon uh, because you could be put to death for speaking against Rome publicly. Even the Catholic Church uses a verse where Rome is called Babylon to prove Peter was in Rome because he sends greetings from Babylon. But Babylon was a place of ruin. There was nothing there. That's in Iraq. It's just, it was destroyed at that time. So they even they knew that Rome was called Babylon. So um, it's not here to hurt you or to insult you or to make you wrong. It is to ask you to please take your salvation a priority in your life and be willing to take the time to question these people. Because if the Bible says something in direct opposition to what your church is teaching, you need to make a decision who you're going to believe. God's preserved word or the traditions of men. Especially if I can show you and prove to you the error and the pagan roots to it. So please forgive me. Please don't think I'm here to offend you. I'm not. I want you to check this out for yourself. I'm heartbroken. You, you know, they say, oh, we don't worship. We venerate. We, well, I, I don't know what worship is then. Because when you make offerings to a statue and sing to it and kiss its foot and hang uh, gar, gar, like flowers around its neck and, you know, that, I don't know what worship is then. I saw these uh, Latin singers praying and singing adoringly to a Our Lady of uh, Perpetual Shoelaces or something. They always got some local apparition of Mary, which is all demonic. I will do a video just on the messages given from Marian apparitions. And they are direct opposition to lifting up Jesus. The devil hates Jesus, the real Jesus. And he's going to get you to worship anything except him. Eternal life is a free gift received by faith in the finished work of Christ. The gospel is the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus according to the scriptures. That is what saved us. The Catholic Church is having you work for something that God offers freely by his grace. Because it's not by works at all. Uh, your works determine reward, but not salvation. Salvation is a free gift. So please Pay attention to what I'm going to show you about Mary, the lies you've been told about Mary, because that is a lie. They're having you pray to a dead sinner. Yes, Mary was a sinner. Please don't be offended by me. Please take the time and check what I tell you against what your church's own catechism teaches versus scripture. Okay? All right. God bless. First thing I want to talk about here is how Mary is called the Queen of Heaven. This is not true. She is not the Queen of Heaven. Um, there's a lot of lies they tell you about her, but this is just one we're going to address right now. The Queen of Heaven was a pagan abomination in the Old Testament. It's mentioned in Jeremiah a few times. Uh, there is no such thing as a biblical Queen of Heaven other than the demonic female goddess worship deity in the book of Jeremiah. Uh, Mary was just a saved sinner who was the mother of the man, Jesus, who was God in the flesh, but she's not the mother of God. And we'll get to that because she, he preexisted before her, before coming in the flesh. So she was the mother of the man, Christ Jesus, who was God, is God in the flesh. So let's just look at the queen of heaven here. Uh, that was based on Semiramis in ancient Babylon. I uh, may find some pictures, videos of, the, you'll see the virgin, perpetual virgin, fertility goddess, holding a baby. And so they took this pagan deity and brought it into the Catholic Church and just renamed it Mary and baby Jesus. Okay, remember, he did grow up. 
and died for us and then rose again. He didn't stay on the cross. He didn't stay a baby. So uh, they took this uh, perpetual virgin child cult, even in ancient, uh, you can see it in Egypt with the woman holding the baby. It was a goddess worship, queen of heaven. It started in Babylon. There was Nimrod, Semiramis, who was his mother and sister, whom he married and became his wife. Gross. Uh, they had a child named Tammuz. And at 40 years old, he died. A wild boar killed him. That's why they eat ham on Easter and have Lent, which is also pagan in origins. It has nothing to do with Christianity, but the 40 years that Tammuz lived. Uh, so, in any case, I will do something on how the pagan holidays were brought in, as I said I would. But for now, let's go in. Now, I'm not trying to put you in bondage or legalism. All right? We are free. Whatever you do, do it unto the Lord. If you honor one day or don't honor one day, do it unto the Lord. But what I am here to show you is that Mary has never been the Queen of Heaven biblically. The Queen of Heaven is actually an abomination. Is it a, it is a demonic, pagan, female fertility goddess, uh, often called Ishtar or Ashtaroth or Esther, or there's many names for her, Semiramis, Isis, all kinds of names. Uh, Diana, uh, the Greeks, the Romans, they all had different names, but it's the same thing. Perpetual virgin, fertility goddess. Sometimes you'd see her with like 20 breasts holding a baby child. All right? So uh, I'll see if I can find some ancient stuff that predates Christianity so you can see statues that were brought in from paganism. So let's look at Jeremiah 44:18. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. So he's stating here that, you know, hey, because we've been worshiping this false goddess, uh, we've been under uh, God's wrath. Okay, here we go. Jeremiah 7, 18. The children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire. And the women need their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. Do you know what they do? Make a little round wafers, hold it up to the sun, and offer them to, guess who? The queen of heaven. What does that sound like? Again, I'll do something on the mass, too, and show you how that came from paganism. All right. And to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. So what happens when you worship the queen of heaven or venerate or whatever you call it? They try to do word games with you. It's worship, all right? You don't worship dead people. And Mary, was, well, she's living because he's got a living, not the dead, but she's in heaven with the Lord. He's her Lord. Even though he came as her son, he's her Lord, all right? We're going to look at verses to support all of this, all right? It's not my opinion. It's the Bible versus the Roman Catholic tradition. All right, so we know she's called the Queen of Heaven. Jeremiah 44, 17. But we will certainly do whatever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals and were, were well and saw no evil. So they're trying to encourage them to worship her a false god. Jeremiah 44, 19. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? Jeremiah 44, 25. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Ye and your wives have both spoken with your mouths and fulfilled with your hands, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour drink offerings out unto her. You will surely accomplish your vows and surely per per perform your vows. And the book in the uh, uh, book of Jeremiah, you can read a lot about her and you will find that the Lord calls her an abomination of the Gentiles. Okay? So Mary is not the queen of heaven. You should not be worshiping anyone called the queen of heaven. Okay. Through her. Uh, so they say, finally, the Immaculate Virgin. By the way, she's not a perpetual virgin. Her husband knew her after the birth of Jesus. I'll show you that verse as well. 
preserved free from all stain of original sin. No, she was not. Mary was not sinless. I will show you where she offered a sacrifice for her sin according to the law. Uh, she also calls God her Savior. Only sinners need saviors. When the course of her earthly life was finished, she was taken up body and soul into heavenly glory. Was she, though? No. Jesus was the only one that ascended into heaven. Uh, exalted by the Lord as queen over all things. I just showed you how she's not queen of heaven. The queen of heaven is a pagan abomination not to be worshipped at all. Mary was a woman full of grace, chosen, a good Jewish girl, chosen to be the person who bore the Savior uh, in her body. And that was a great honor, but it was not uh, because she was sinless at all. She, uh, she was with sin, just like all of us are, born under Adam. Uh, and uh, I, I will refute all of these lies about Mary. Again, this is not to hurt you. Or to make you angry, I want this is your soul here. I want you to understand your soul is worth questioning. Don't blindly accept these traditions, these are not true. What they're doing is they're taking honor off of Jesus and lifting Mary up as if you can go through Mary to get to God. Okay, there is not any place that makes Mary a mediator for us. Please let me show you the proof. That there is only one advocate, and it is not Mary. Now, if the Bible says there's one advocate with God, how many are there? One. If that advocate is someone else other than Mary, can that one advocate be Mary? Of course not. All right? So let's look at uh, over here um, in Timothy 2.5. For there is one God... And one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. How many mediators? One. Who is that mediator? Jesus Christ. That's why we pray, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Not Mary, nor do we ask Mary to pray for us. We don't ask dead people to pray for us, okay? We don't pray to saints. That's also an abomination because we're praying to dead people. Shall a people not seek after their God? If we can come boldly to the throne of grace for help in the tr uh, time of trouble when we're in need, why do we need anybody to intercede for us? We don't. Jesus is the mediator and advocate. Let me give you that one. This is in John, 1 John 2, 1. My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Christ Jesus the righteous. So who is advocate? Jesus Christ. Who is mediator? Jesus Christ. Who is the high priest? Jesus Christ. After the order of Melchizedek. Okay? You got to question these things. Paganism was brought and kept and retained with Christian terms put on top. All right? The Roman Catholic Church is not the true church. I'm sorry. If the Bible is teaching you the exact opposite about Mary, what else is it teaching you wrong? This is just about Mary. And I'm using nothing but scripture. This is not my opinion. This isn't because Renee doesn't like the Catholic Church. I love Catholics. I want them saved. I'm asking you to care enough about your souls to check the Bible against what that church is teaching. All right? One mediator, Jesus Christ. Not mediatrix, not Mary, ever. You cannot get to God through Mary. Cannot do it. She was the earthly vessel that God in the flesh was born through. That's it. That is it. Okay? Just a sinner like you and me that needed God's grace. Also, we have a mediator, an advocate, and that's Jesus Christ. Not anyone else. Okay, here comes the next thing. Okay, this section will be refuting the uh, lie that Mary was sinless. I just read you the catechism that says she was free from original sin in both body and soul. Not true. Jesus is the only one that never sinned. He's the lamb without spot or blemish. And why is that? Because he didn't, his father 
did not come from Adam. His father was the Holy Spirit, God himself. So he did not inherit the fallen sin nature that Mary inherited. Okay? So let's look at this. I will prove to you two places where Mary is proven to be a sinner. And I know this offends you, but it's true. It should not offend you because she's just a person. A sinner in need of a Savior. Jesus was her Lord and Savior. Her God. He, she just happened to be the vessel by which he manifested in the flesh. Okay? And we love her and she's very honored because she was the chosen vessel. But that's all she was. She was a sinner saved by grace and should not be lifted up for any more than that. Now, uh, Mary herself calls God her Savior. Who is in need of a Savior? Sinners need to be saved. She is a sinner. Uh, I'm sure she was a very righteous woman who kept the law the best of her ability. I'm not saying that she was an evil woman. Just that she was not without sin. Okay? Luke 1, 46, 47. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Okay? She calls him her Savior. Now, you'll see once Jesus was born that her and Joseph go to um, the temple to make offerings for Jesus to be circumcised, right? And when the days of her purification, talking about Mary, according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. That means the first child a woman has will be set apart and called holy unto God, right? And to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, okay? And behold, uh, so he was talking about a, a man whose holy, a Holy Ghost was upon him and he prophesied that Jesus was our salvation. Okay, so we see Mary and Joseph going to offer the sacrifice after her time of purification according to the law for the firstborn child that opens the womb. Right? He's holy unto the Lord. So she's going to the temple. Let's look in the book of Leviticus and see what these two turtle doves or two young pigeons are for okay speak unto the children this is uh, Leviticus 12 speak unto the children of Israel this is God telling mm -hmm. Moses saying if a woman have conceived seed and born a man child then she shall be unclean seven days that's the time of our purification it's talking about in Luke according to the days of the separation for her infirmity so shall she be unclean so she's unclean because of the blood after giving birth for a week, okay? And in the eighth day, and it's amazing because on the eighth day is when vitamin K is at its highest, which aids in blood clotting. The exact day eight is when God calls for boys to be circumcised. See, God knew all this. On that eighth day, that's when the blood clotting agent, uh, vitamin K, is the greatest in an infant's body. Is that amazing? And the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a male child, a maid child, then she'll be unclean two weeks as in her separation. Okay? And then it says... When the days of her purifying are fulfilled, we see here that the days of her purifying were fulfilled. So apparently this was the sacrifice for the firstborn male child that she's going to the temple to do. All right. Uh, and it says 30 and 3 days. So I guess 33 days after. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and to a priest. Let's continue. Who shall offer it before the Lord and make an atonement for her. And she shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. 
This is the law for her that has born a male or a female. And if she can't bring a lamb, she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons. You see it? it says it right there. For her sin, as a sin offering. This is what Mary brought to the temple according to the law. The exact same one. So, sorry. You don't need a sin offering and you don't need a savior unless you're a sinner. All right. Okay, another pagan tradition was brought in. See, Satan knows the scriptures. Okay, he knew the prophecy of the one born of a woman would crush his head. So he's known this prophecy of a virgin bearing a son for a long time. However, he's a copycatter and a counterfeiter, and he likes to cause confusion. So he started a lot of these uh, Babylonian virgin child cults. As I said before, Semiramis, uh, Isis. You know, you'll see a lot of these fertility. Uh, you, even before Jesus, they just took the statues and put Mary and baby Jesus on it. These are the same exact statues used. I'll find some for you uh, to put on this video. But the, this is a lie that the Roman Catholic Church teaches, that she was not only sinless, but was a perpetual virgin. Not scriptural at all. It tells us that Joseph uh, knew her intimately after Jesus was born. Let's look over here in uh, Matthew 1.24. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. Because the angel said, hey, don't worry that Mary's pregnant. That's a holy child. This, this holy thing is from the Lord. Okay? She didn't cheat on you. She didn't sin. All right. And he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. So when did Joseph know his wife? That means have sexual relations with Mary after she had brought forth her firstborn son. It says, he knew her not till, and that tells you right there, that he didn't know his wife until she gave birth to Jesus. Okay? Then he had many brothers and sisters. Let's look at Matthew, um, I think it's 12, I have to look it up, 55. Is, this, is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? There's four of them right there. Two of them wrote books in the Bible, James and Jude. Paul calls uh, James the brother of the Lord in the book of Acts. Okay? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Because they like to say, oh, the, the, they weren't real physical or they were stepbrother. No, they weren't. It didn't say anything about being remarried. She gave birth. They won't do anything to make this lie fit. But I've shown you now what the Bible has said versus what the tradition of the Roman Catholic Church says. They adopted pagan, pagan stories and brought it into Christianity and tried to connect themselves to the original Roman Church, which was started by Paul and had nothing to do with the church that started over 300 years later with Constantine. They have nothing in common. All right? If you look at the biblical church in the first century versus the one in 300 AD, you'll find no similarities. And I will do a, a lot to prove that. You won't see one man called the Holy Father over all the world churches. No, Jesus is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. He's the head of the church, not any man on this earth. Every church had its own local leader. He didn't run all the other churches. He had his own congregation, and that was it. That way, no one man can rule over all these people. It's not, that is an earthly kingdom. It is a religious, financial, and governmental church of this world not the heavenly kingdom all right and i'm so sorry this is not to hurt you but i'm going to show you these are lies okay so right here we see four of his brothers named and some of the sisters is this not the carpenter's son is not his mother called mary and his brothers james and joseph and simon and judas and his sisters are they not all with us 
Whence then has this man all these things? All right? So it's clear that he had brothers and sisters. And it says that Joseph did know Mary, but he didn't know her until she gave birth to Jesus. And there came then, this is Mark 3.31, there came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked round about on them which sat about him and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever should do the will of God, the same is my brother and sister and my mother. Okay, so we know his brothers and his mom were outside. So that, that should be enough to show you that's not true. She was not a perpetual virgin. That was brought in through a pagan fertility goddess worship. Okay, this is about Mary being the mother of God. Uh, she's not. God has no mother. God has always existed. He's eternal. She's the mother of God in the flesh, the man, Christ Jesus. But Jesus was in heaven before he became a man. Uh, there's a verse where David, did Jesus asked the Pharisees, hey, if the Messiah, the Christ, is born after the lineage of David, the line of the tribe of Judah, according to scripture, how then can David call him Lord? And they were stumped. See, it's, vet, it's flesh versus spirit. Because he's saying technically David is his great, 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 great grandfather. So how does he call him Lord? And they're stumped. Because Jesus existed as God, as Lord before he manifested in the flesh. So Mary's not the mother of God. God doesn't, you think God didn't exist until Mary gave birth to him? No, 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 no. Okay, of course God exists. He created the earth. Mary didn't, wasn't here when the earth was created. All right, let's look. All generations call me blessed. This is from the Roman Catholic Catechism itself, okay? The church's devotion so you can't tell me you don't worship. They do worship her. Come on. Stop playing word games with me. To the blessed virgin, and by the way, she's not a perpetual virgin. I'll prove that too. Is intrinsic to Christian worship. Now, perpetual virgin was a pagan concept uh, that they brought into the Catholic Church. The church rightly honors the blessed virgin with special devotion. From the most ancient times, the Blessed Virgin has been honored with the title of Mother of God, to whose protection the faithful fly in all their dangers and needs. So we go to her as a mediatrix, but she's not one. I just proved that. This very special devotion differs essentially from the adoration, which is given to the incarnate word, and equally to the Father and to the Holy Spirit, and greatly fosters this adoration. See, they're trying to say, we don't really worship her, but we kind of do. It's just... Their way of doing it. Okay, so she is not the mother of God. All right? She's the mother of the man, Christ Jesus, who is God in the flesh. So let's look at this. First of all, we know over in John, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. So he was both with God and was God. So he's with the Father, but he's God himself too, as the Son, as the Word. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended him not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. It goes on to talk about John the Baptist being the voice crying in the wilderness that was to foretell. Now let's look at 1 Timothy 3, 10, 3, 16, which tells us that he is God in the flesh. All right? And without, this is 1 Timothy 3, 16. And without controversy... Great is the mystery of godliness. That's why the mystery of iniquity is Satan manifest in the flesh. See, he's the copycat. Because Jesus is the mystery of godliness, God in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us, right? And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles believed on in the world, received up into glory, not Mary, okay? So he is God in the flesh, and he tells you that he is the bread that came down from heaven, so he was in heaven first, he was the word, 
He was already in heaven before he became a, a man, okay, before he manifested in the flesh. John 6, 38, for I came down from heaven. He's the bread that came down from heaven. He was born in Bethlehem, house of bread. Not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. So he came down from heaven. If you go over to John chapter 8, they said, The Jews answered him, Thou art not yet 50 years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? Because he said, Abraham saw my day and rejoiced, right? Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Now, that was the name of God in the Old Testament when Moses said, Who do I tell the Israelites sent me? He says, Tell them, I am that I am sent you. So, the I am sent you. And that was Jesus in that bush. So, in any case, she's not the mother of God. She's the mother of the man, Christ Jesus, who is God in the flesh. But she didn't give birth to God. God pre-existed before Mary did. You think there was no God before Mary was born? Of course. So now we're going to get to Mary was sinless? No. The last thing I will refute is that Jesus ever lifted up Mary or the apostles never lifted up Mary. And I'll give you this one verse to prove that he shut that down quick. We honor her as the vessel the Lord came through and that is it. She's not sinless, not a perpetual virgin. She's not the mother of God. She's the mother of man, Christ Jesus, who's God in the flesh, but God preexisted. We don't pray to her. We don't pray through her. She's not an advocate. She's not a mediatrix. She's not anything but a dead sinner saved by God's grace. That's it. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be ugly here, but we've got to take, see, Satan wants you to do anything except get to God through Jesus Christ. Do you understand that? He wants, he doesn't care. He just wants to, for you to adore Mary because they all sound so righteous, but you need to check the Bible because Satan himself comes as an angel of light. He masquerades as an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of righteousness. Please. Did you think he'd come overtly evil? Oh, the blessed immaculate heart and all these unbiblical things. Okay. You'll see after Jesus ascends into heaven. By the way, she did not ascend into heaven. I don't even need to tell. There's nothing to show you. There's nowhere in scripture where Mary ascended into heaven. And I showed the catechism where they say that she was without original sin, was sinless, and ascended into heaven bodily. She did not, but the Lord did. The Lord ascended into heaven, not Mary. She was a sinner in need of a savior. So we know that did not happen. And you see her praying in the book of Acts with the disciples. You see them in the Gospels praying right next to the disciples and her other children. They're not coming to Mary to pray through Mary or lifting up Mary in any form whatsoever. They are with her as a sister in Christ and the mother of their Lord and they pray right along with her, but they don't pray through her. They do not lift her up. Now, one time, see, Satan's been trying to do this since day one. Lift up Jesus' mother. And Jesus knew what he was doing and shut it down quick. The first time somebody tried to worship, he knew Satan was working through this woman. Listen to this. He's still working through the Roman Catholic Church to venerate. They say they don't worship. They do worship Mary. Come on, unless I don't know what worship is. All right, so we will see here. Now, Jesus, look at the timing of this. Jesus has just cast out an evil spirit. This is in Luke chapter 11, down around 26, 27. He has just cast out evil spirits. And everybody's like, huh, the Pharisees, you cast that uh uh, devil out with the power of the king of the devils himself, the prince of the devils. You cast out the uh, Satan with Beelzebub's power. See, they were trying to. Satan was coming in an overt way, accusing Jesus. He's of the he's of the devil. He, they were blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Right? He warns them later. If you keep blaspheming the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be able to come back from that, and you're just going to stay lost because God's not going to open your eyes. Because he's showing you, he showed you the scripture, you reject me, your father's the devil, flat out. And he says, Satan can't cast out Satan. So, uh, in any case, that's what's just happened here. 
okay? And then he warns about if the house is clean and you don't fill the house, then seven more of the devil's buddies are going to come back in and you're going to be filled with devils. You'll be worse off than you were to start with. So you need the Holy Spirit. So you need to trust in Christ so that you can have the house filled so that no demon or devil can inhabit your body, right? So that's just what's happened, right? So they, 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 the crowd sees his power and authority. So the first thing the devil does is he tries to refute him and, and discredit Jesus by saying, ah, he gets, his, he gets his power from the devil himself, right? Well, that doesn't work. Now he's going to come in another way, but it's way more subtle. Going to try to take the glory from the Father and Jesus Christ and put it on to Mary. All right. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. So, blessed are the breasts that you nursed from. Blessed is your mother, her womb, and her breasts. And he said, Yea, rather... Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. So, did he go, yes, my mother, worship my mother, blessed is my mother, she is a mediator to me. No, I even saw somewhere in the catechism of one bishop or pope said, you go to the mother in order to get to the son, so he can dole out salvation and grace. What? That's crazy. So Jesus shut it down. The first time that he's doing all these miracles so the devil flat out uses somebody to discredit him saying your powers of the devil himself. Then you got a woman coming in more subtly. Oh, blessed is the mother now. Do you see? Jesus shut it down. Yay, rather, rather, not, yeah, my mom's blessed all right because I came through her, but rather, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So, uh, it's real clear to me that Jesus shut down the Mary worship straight up. And Satan has been trying to divert the glory from Jesus, from the Father to the glory of God, the Father. Jesus, the name above all names, to the glory of God, the Father. They've been trying to belittle Jesus. Satan hates Jesus and he will lift up Mary or saints or anybody other than Jesus. So please know that I didn't do this to offend you or to hurt you. Your eternal soul, your destination is dependent on the information that you take time to check out. And we are warned to check all things. Be a good Berean and check scripture. And your Roman Catholic Church is teaching direct opposition to the Bible. You need to check that out. Okay? We want you saved. I'm not here trying to hurt you. Satan is going to cloud your mind and you're going to be so upset because you want, you know, you've been doing this for years. It gives you comfort. We get addicted to these rituals. And I know, I know a Catholic priest that God saved and he is staying in the Catholic Church so he can make sure his parishioners know the real gospel. That it's by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's for him that worketh not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. When you trust only in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, which is the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, go check it out. It's the gospel that saved us. It is that Christ died for our sins and that he was buried and he rose again according to the scriptures on the third day. That's the gospel that saved us and we put our trust in that work. And he gives us the gift of righteousness, God's righteousness, and cleanses us from all our unrighteousness and does not impute our sin unto us apart from works. And that's what they don't want you to know. Okay, please take the time. Come out of her, my people that you be not partakers of her fornication. All right? God bless.